Hey guys, another video about my adventures building my Rat Rig V-Core 3.1. This video is going to be a little bit different. I was editing the next installment in the Rat Rig build series, and I went a little overboard with the explainers and graphics for the whole print head, hot end, extruder, whatever assembly. Rat Rig has a really cool system called EVA that it uses to enable builders of their printers to choose what kind of components they want. And as far as I know, there's not really anything else like it out there uh, in the 3D printer world. I ended up putting so much detail into this that I thought it kind of deserved its own video, uh, especially because I haven't seen a lot about EVA out there. And when I do that next installment of the Rat Rig build video, I can focus a little bit more on the build experience than the explainer stuff. So let's take a look at what EVA is and I'll foreshadow how it nearly broke my spirit while trying to build my Rat Rig. You might remember from my last video. Oh yeah, and this son of a the entire EVA hot end assembly? Yeah, we'll get to him later. We'll get to him. And now we've gotten to him. But before I get too much into it, I wanna clarify, Eva's actually awesome. My poor experience with it is really just an unlucky combination of factors that won't affect most. But there's still plenty to learn from my struggles, like why captive nut designs are evil and why you should fill your stockings this Christmas with heat set inserts. We'll get to that in a minute. So what is all this junk on your X axis? We know it's there to squeeze molten plastic onto the build plate, but what's actually going on in there? There's four main components. First is the hot end, which is everything you need to get the filament to the hot nozzle and melt it onto the build plate. Hot ends differ in their design for heat management, anti-clogging, and nozzle compatibility. For instance, I chose the Fadus Rapido UHF because UHF stands for ultra high flow, and its design is well suited to melting a ton of plastic quickly, and it's also compatible with a bunch of nozzles I already own. But a hot end just melts, it doesn't push or pull anything. That's the job of the extruder motor. It's a stepper motor which pushes precise lengths of filament through the hot end to match the desired line shape and print head speed. Extruder motors differ in the way they grip the filament, the force they can apply to it, and how easy it is to switch between filaments. The most common extruder motors for Rat Rig are the Orbiter and a couple Bontech variants. I got the feeling I'd be happy with any of them, but I picked the Orbiter because I do some advanced materials and I want a really hot chamber and the Orbiter looks like it handles that better. The third piece is the part cooling fan, which blows air at the tip of the nozzle to help solidify material quickly and helps limit oozing when it's between print moves. There's not a lot of variety in these, but I use materials that require less cooling, so I wanted to have a leaner and lighter cooling solution. And the final piece is the auto bed leveling probe, and I would say do not buy or build a new printer without one. Auto bed mesh leveling eliminates an entire class of obnoxious failure modes for 3D printing, especially for beginners. So that's what's in your print head. And most casual users just buy a printer that comes with some combination of them chosen by the manufacturer and it's fine, right? But if you're looking for high flow rates, advanced materials, high build chamber temperatures, or you simply plan to change filaments and nozzles a lot, you'll benefit from mixing and matching your own. The problem is each unique combination of these requires a unique mounting fixture to get it onto your x-axis. The most obvious solution is for Rat Rig to just prescribe a combination like the other manufacturers. But that's not what they did. They wanted to give users a choice. So one of the guys from the Rat Rig team, whose name I'm gonna thoroughly butcher, Pavo Kutzmus, came up with a highly modular printhead design called EVA. Not all hot ends and extruders are supported, but they have quite a few already and they're actively working on more. As long as your X-axis is a 20-20 piece of aluminum with a linear rail on top, you can use EVA. You start with these four base parts that wrap around the X-axis like a burrito, just the top piece anchored to the linear rail glide block. Then for each of your chosen hot end, your extruder motor, your desired cooling fan, and your bed probe, you simply go to the EVA website and download STL files for adapters for each component, and then you just print them off on a different printer. This is actually a really cool system and really helps push the ecosystem forward by making it easier for users to pick and upgrade parts that suit their needs. So what's the problem? Well, two things. There's two main schools of design for adding threads to a part to fasten them together. One is called captive nuts, the other is heat set inserts. Rat Rig defaults to captive nuts for fasteners, including all the EVA parts that they include in their repo by default and they even have a helpful video to show how to install them. There are hex-shaped insets into the material and you use a screw to capture the nuts via friction fit into the holes. This is the beginner-friendly option because it doesn't require the user to have anything other than some extra M3 nuts. But I was never a fan of captive nuts, even before this printer. If your holes print too small, you can crack the part as you capture the nuts into them, or if they're too big, the nuts just fall out, which kind of defeats the purpose. Heat set inserts, on the other hand, require buying the actual threaded inserts and then using a soldering iron to melt them into the part. But the inserts are super cheap and they're fast to install once you have your soldering iron heated up. And once the insert is in there, the threaded hole is much more reliable since it's actually melted to the part. They're also a lot easier to design into 3D models and a little bit more versatile in where you can put them. 
They tolerate mis-sized holes much better than captive nuts. You can even add them to parts that don't have fasteners by simply drilling a 4 or 4.5 millimeter hole in the part. Now you can understand why Eva gave me such a hard time. First, I downloaded the default parts that were provided by Ratrig, which was the captive nut parts. If I had understood Eva before I started this, I would have actually gone to the Eva website and downloaded the version of the parts that use heat set inserts because I have a drawer full of heat set inserts. I love them. I use them for everything. And second, when you go to the Ratrig website and you download all these parts, those parts are actually slightly oversized because they assume that you're printing on a consumer printer which will print exactly the size of the model, but then shrink a little bit. But if you remember from my part zero video, I decided to be a baller and paid to print these parts on an industrial printer at the local fab lab, the Fuse One. And the quote problem with the Fuse One is they already have shrinkage compensation. So when I tell it to print oversized parts, it prints oversized parts. And the end result was that all the hex holes were too big and couldn't capture any of the nuts. They just would fall out when I would put them in. And under normal circumstances, I would just reprint all these parts but I paid a lot of money for them, so I didn't want to just throw them out. So I tried to power through it with a lot of super glue and a lot of swearing.